Hi, I'm Nathan, and today we're going to be talking about the design philosophy behind making a tabletop role-playing game. My game Soul, in its current form, isn't a great game. Or rather, it isn't a great role-playing game. But why is that? What makes a good role-playing game? Well, I am in no way an expert, but I'm going to do my best to explain my perspective after working on this game for the past eight years. Let's start with the basics. Role-playing games have two distinct components to them. The mechanics and the story. The mechanics encompass a lot, from the procedures to the rules. However, the part I'm going to be focusing on today are the ones that resolve conflict in the story, whether it's a social dispute, an obstacle to overcome, or even an actual fight. The story component contains both roleplay and narration. The roleplay portion is the characters' interactions and development as they push the story forward. The narration is how the game master describes scenes or actions, or how the players describe what they're doing. The trouble with making a role-playing game is keeping these two components intertwined. This is due to the fact that if you're doing one, it is impossible to be doing the other. Let me explain with an example. Let's say a player is trying to convince an NPC to help them out. The player talks to the NPC and pleads their case. After, the Game Master decides that the player needs to roll to persuade the NPC. The player rolls, and the result is determined. The NPC then responds in turn. When the player is talking with the NPC, that is obviously role-playing. Then, when the Game Master asks for the player to roll, the role-playing is stopped in favor of the rules. With a decision made, role-playing continues. The mechanics interrupt role-play, and therefore the story. But is this even really a problem? Well, not necessarily. Some prefer mechanic-heavy games over roleplay ones. Or vice versa. But me, I like roleplay. I created this game to tell stories. So with a mechanics-heavy game, the stories are limited. So why have mechanics at all if they're going to interrupt roleplay? Maybe an extreme question, but it's one that's worth considering. So, what do mechanics provide for a roleplaying game? First and foremost, the mechanics are what makes it a game. So you kinda need it. While they do in fact interrupt roleplay, they are 100% necessary to make the game what it is. They also allow for structure. Without mechanics, players can do whatever they want. As nice as that sounds, the game can fall into chaos pretty quickly if anyone can do anything. Having systems in place allows your characters to be grounded. Mechanics also allows your characters to be specialized. Giving a character stat boosts or modifiers lets them have their own strengths and weaknesses to make them feel unique. Combat. This would be almost impossible to have interesting combat without good mechanics. Like I said earlier, mechanics a good majority of the time are there just to help solve conflicts, and you can't get much more conflicty than a fight. Yes, I said conflicty. Okay, so we need mechanics but we need to find a way to work them into roleplay and narration as seamlessly as we can. So what are our options? Well, I don't claim to have them all, but here's what I could come up with. Modifiers. The one that most, if not all, roleplaying games have are stat bonuses or modifiers. This allows the character's abilities and prowess to affect the story and match the way that the player is roleplaying the character. The main problem with this method is it usually means more math, this usually means spending more time actually away from the story, as you take your time to search your character sheet to find what modifiers to add to your role. Narrative-based skills. Have your skills that actually affect the narrative. Having character abilities that affect the environment or other characters is a great way to make it feel as if you have not stopped roleplaying, even if you have. This is why things like spells are great in these types of games. If a character decides to use an illusion to confuse a guard, it feels much more impactful than just rolling a dice to sneak by. Half roleplay, half combat. For every combat-based ability, add a roleplay element. Our trait system is a good example of that. For instance, the boisterous trait allows for some flavor for the character's personality, and allows the character to deal one damage to all enemies around the target you're attacking. Unfortunately, this isn't perfect either due to the fact that the player may like the ability that the trait provides, but not like the personality implication for their character. D&D 5e's backgrounds are kind of a good example of this as well. Promote roleplay and discourage combat. 
combat is by far the most mechanic-heavy portion of most RPGs. That's why some games actively discourage combat. For example, Monster of the Week makes it so you will always take damage if you decide to attack someone. This works well for this game, but not necessarily for all games, especially if you're looking to have cool combat as part of your story. Discourage repetitive actions. If fighting has to be part of your game, then boring combat should be discouraged. If a player decides to take the same action again and again, then things can get pretty boring and not feel very thematic. Hidden rolls. Hiding dice rolls can make for more suspense. For instance, if a player is trying to sneak past a guard, but has no idea of how well the guard has perceived them, then this is much more intense. Don't have initiative. Most role-playing games have initiative to determine who goes first during combat. This can oftentimes instantly change a player's mindset from roleplay to battle simulator. Truthfully, I don't really know how to implement this one yet, but it's worth considering. Ignore the rules. I found that in a lot of role-playing games, it can be easiest for the GM to just ignore the rules or mechanics and let the roleplay be what determines the outcome. Did your player just kick ass at making a really inspiring speech to convince a town of people to join them in the fight against some space pirates? Then who cares about the persuasion role? Ignore the rules and let the player auto-succeed for doing a good job. This is good, but not really a solution. The GM should not have to rely on themselves to make the game good. The game should stand on its own and be up to the GM to make this kind of decision. Okay, so how does soul fit into this? Well, let me bring it back to the first question. What makes a good role-playing game? Well, I can't say for certain. I don't have the full answer yet. But based on what we've learned, we've created a design philosophy to make sure to keep in mind what we want when making a future version of the game. One, narrative is key. The mechanics are meant to serve the narrative. Two, Gameplay is seamless. Gameplay or mechanics shouldn't change between out of combat and in combat. 3. Game mechanics should be simple at heart. Utility should be favored over numbers. Math is inherently bad for the gameplay experience. 4. Players in Soul should have meaningful flexibility and options. They should always have impactful options to choose from. 5. The mechanics should never encourage a meta or perfect strategy. Players should never be able to repeat the same set of actions ad nauseum. 6. Characters and souls should feel diverse. No two characters should feel the same. And 7. The game should be unique. We aren't looking to remake D&D, GURPS, <laughs> I can't say that one seriously. We aren't looking to remake D&D, GURPS, or, especially in our case, you Realms Live. The game should encourage a unique sci-fi, narrative-driven experience. These aren't going to be hard-set rules for myself, but more of guidelines to keep myself on track. And hopefully, I can end up making Soul a good role-playing game. Anyway, hopefully you learned something from this, or at least have a new perspective on making an RPG. Next time, we're going to be looking at some of the old soul classes and how we can apply this design philosophy to fix them. If you're curious to know more about soul, you can go to our website, soulrpg.com, where you can find out how to play and more about the game. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one.